السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Today we're looking at the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى المتكبر المتكبر What's the translation of that then? They translate that as the magnificent or the superior the magnificent or the superior even though when we use the word takabbur or mutakabbir for each other or for human beings we mean something negative we mean arrogant right and that word would not be befitting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we'll explain inshallah in a minute so why what does it mean what's the meaning of this name al mutakabbir one of the explanations the scholar said and they said Allah الذي له الكبرياء as Allah says in the Quran وله الكبرياء في السماوات والأرض yeah يعني to him is a الكبرياء which means the greatness here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is the greatest he has the greatness in the heavens and in the earth so كبرياء then greatness and we always say Allah is the greatest so المتكبر because he is the most superior he is the most the great or the magnificent that's one explanation the other explanation says المتكبر means that الذي تكبر which means he is elevated and greater than and superior to being تكبر عن كل سوء أو شر أو ظلم he is superior and far above doing any evil or injustice or any having any bad attribute or any Something negative, any negative description. And then the other explanation, a third explanation says Al Mutakabbir, the name was given because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takabbara wa ta'ala, Allah is above and higher than any of the attributes of any of his servants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Khaliq in the complete sense. And none of his servants can do khalq in the full sense as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can. Or rizq, provide the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. Or can be a Rabb, the Lord, Creator, Sustainer, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be. Whenever any human being has any good quality, he will have one good quality and he will have others that are not as good. Yani, someone might have a lot of good knowledge, but they might be poor. Someone might be very wealthy, but have bad health. Or someone might have, you know, good health, but not educated. So people will have some good quality, but they'll never have every quality completely perfect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has every quality to the fullest, completely perfect. That's the first thing. The second difference between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard and His servants is that anything anyone on earth has of good ultimately came to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if they worked hard for it, Allah azza wa made that possible for them. What we're trying to see now is why it's not right for anyone to think they're superior over anyone else. Because we said, number one, you might be superior in one thing, but inferior in another. Nobody will be perfect in everything. Number two, whatever you do have came to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third thing the scholars mention is that whatever you have, you can lose it instantly. Someone is rich, you know, he can become poor the next day. And some people pretend to be rich and they're not even that, that's what they say about Trump, right? But he's not really that rich. You know, he wrote a book, right? Most of it is chapter 11. The po- <laughs> to advance, all right. The point is that now if you look at how human beings, whatever good quality they have, will fall within one of these three. So that means now you see why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mutakabbir, the superior, he's superior in every single way. But when a human being is pretending to be superior over someone else, it's not, it's not authentic and it's fake. And it's not warranted because, number one, he might be superior in one aspect and inferior in another. Number two, he got it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He better show humility. And number three, he can lose it at any minute. He can lose his health at any minute, his wealth at any minute. Even his intelligence and knowledge, he can lose it. You know, you've seen people who lose their knowledge due to a stroke or whatever it is. Ya may Allah protect all of you and your families. So then, when someone is trying to be superior over someone else, he now becomes arrogant. Mutakabbir in the sense that he is arrogant. He's trying to yatakabbar, yata'ala, 
to show that he's above and elevated over everyone else, but he doesn't have the right to. And he doesn't have the full description. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a full description. So now we understand why al mutakabbir for Allah azawajal means the majestic, the superior. But for people, it means someone who's just arrogant because you don't really have the right. You don't have the right. You don't have any real reason to think you're better than that other person. If you remember the three things we mentioned. So then what is the benefit of knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mutakabbir? The benefit is you see why Allah azawajal is al-mutakabbir and you see why you can't be mutakabbir. So then you understand that your role is to be mutawadah. Right? Mutawada, which means someone humbled, showing humility. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Man tawada alillahi rafa'ah. Whoever humbles himself for the Sahaja elevates him in rank. He works the opposite. Some people try to be elevated in front of others, so they become arrogant. And then people put them down. But you humble yourself for the sake of Allah Azujal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise you in rank. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ gave us a visual. He said, Man tawada alillahi hakada. And the Prophet ﷺ turned his hand palm downwards. And he brought his hand low and low and low and low to the ground like this. Whoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah like this. Then he said, Allah will raise him in rank like this. And the narrator said, the Prophet ﷺ turned his hand palm upwards now and began to rise and raise and raise and raise his hand and went until he went as high as he could. Whoever humbles himself for Allah like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him in rank like that. So one of the most powerful things that leaves an effect on other, on your fellow human being is when you show humility and you treat them with humility. And we close with this story from the battle of Khaybar and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his way to the battle, a small young girl. She was his riding companion. Every time they stopped the camel, she would, you know, a young girl, she can just jump off the camel. But the Prophet would tell her, give me your hand. And he would help her down. And every time they're about to ride again, he would help her up with her hand. And she was riding behind him until they got to Khaybar. And if you know, the battle of Khaybar was a magnificent victory. The Prophet was so pleased because it was difficult and it was a strong fortress. After conquering Khaybar, the little girl says, now she's narrating the story years later as an older woman. She says, I was after the battle looking for the Prophet She said, I found him and he was looking around. You know, he's got his generals, his soldiers. This is a magnificent victory. Could it possibly be that he's looking for the little girl? Of all this commotion, he's remembering the little girl who was his riding companion. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw me, he signaled to me. So he was looking for her, Wasallam. And she came, and he took out a necklace from the spoils. And he went like this. So I came to take it. He said, no, I'll put it around your neck. Just look at how simple, humble acts can go. The Prophet ﷺ then with his blessed hand, Wasallam, put the necklace around her neck. What was the result of this simple gesture? Just being a companion of the Prophet for just this short trip in her life. It never ever, the effect never ever left her heart. She's telling this story as an older woman. She says, Wallahi, la yugadiru raqabati abada. Wallahi, it never leaves my neck. And I have put it in my will. I have put it in my will that if I die, it's buried between me and the shroud. What does that mean? This is your body, this is your shroud. And if it's between her and the shroud, it means it's really on her. Why? Why does she want to wear it and be buried in it? She says, so I can meet him on the day of judgment and say, Ya Rasulullah, remember me? Look at how this act of humility goes. She's taking it to the next life. She was a little girl, but she wants to meet the Prophet on the day of judgment. Ya Rasulullah, remember? Look at the necklace. You remember me? This is how far humility goes. This is the benefit of understanding why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be al-mutakabbir. And it's positive for him, but it's negative for us because we don't have the right to be. And so what should we be? We should have tawada, humility for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zatim al for attentive listening. Sallallahu mubarak ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.